26 minutes after 6 o'clock. We are decoding her. We've actually been waiting for this one and pondering on it. Uh, I think you know this, right? You yeah, know this. we bumped into each other. Yes, yes, last yes, we year did. Sometime. Last year sometime, we did yeah. bump into each other. And you looked well. You yeah. really looked well, yeah. like as you do now. Thank mm, you. You still do. Do you think the studio is your safe haven? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, that's where you you feel most protected from everything else that could possibly be happening outside of you and inside of you absolutely especially in the last couple of months i've always i've also developed like a very strong studio practice Mm -hmm. where i have a home studio in my house there's a certain time of the day they are clock and Mm -hmm. what's beautiful about that the more you create the more creation just flows over Mm -hmm. to you Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. are you one of those people who will go to studio even after you've just dropped something or you will have seasons where you spend most of your time in studio like a few months maybe so i did take time off uh studio i took about after i recorded my last album i was not in studio for about a year and a half oh. we on the road i was on the road but to be honest Mm. Guys, <laughs> there was a time that um, I think that as an artist, right, whatever you're going through in your personal life also affects your voice and mm. your studio and the things you do. I once watched a documentary where, like, they were analyzing, I think, Aretha Franklin's voice for over a period of 70 years. And yeah. whenever she was going through different moments in her life, her voice was different. I went through wow. a similar. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they can tell you, like in that video, they can even say, it's because she's sad or she's happy or Mm. this is happening in her life. Mm. So for me, I went through a period where I was having anxiety attacks in the studio. Really? And yeah, that was, I think, mid-2021. At that Mm. point, I was like, okay, I need to stop. I need to take care of Kukuletu first. And then... um, and I think that's the best decision I made because I started back in, in studio again in August last year and I've just written so many beautiful songs. I don't even know where to begin to Listen, release music. <laughs> we know exactly where to begin. We are starting right there with the music talks with Ukugule to Barita. Absolutely mm-hmm. nice to know. Nice to know. The sounds of Oliver Mduguzi and Hugh Masigela both featured here on a Barita song, Mwanawa Mai. Yes. What does this mean? Ndasekaya. Ndasekaya. And this yeah. is Shona, right? This is Shona. Um, it's a song talking uh, to a young woman mm-hmm. in a community mm-hmm. who has faced challenges mm-hmm. and is displaced. And she doesn't know who she is. She doesn't know wow. um, where she comes from. And it's just a song to her to soothe her soul. To yeah. say, Lula. This is amazing. Do you think you, you might relate to that Absolutely. The lyrics of that song in any way. Oh yeah. I mean, we've seen your your personal life um, yeah. explode and unfold on social media yeah. with so many opinions around it. Your yeah. marriage, the divorce, or the processes, or the assumptions that we make around your life. Because mm. none of us know facts. The mm. only people that do know facts are yourselves involved in the matter. Yeah. And um, did you ever feel displaced? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it's been a difficult year. Mm-hmm. Um, to be displaced and also abused publicly because mm-hmm. that's what it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> I I have vivid memories of the day I left my marriage. Mm-hmm. I remember that was the first time that I found out because I called a therapist on that day when I was leaving. And that's when I found out that I was in a narcissistically abusive relationship mm-hmm. I, mm-hmm. because I s- spent a long time, I spent like an hour and a half telling exactly what was going on in the relationship and the entire time i'm thinking oh this is rage this is someone that's angry oh mm-hmm. this is someone mm-hmm. you know that's that's going through stuff mm-hmm. um and the day that i learned that i was in an abusive relationship i did not stay one minute um mm-hmm. i quickly made plans on that day mm-hmm. and i literally remember i want to tell it because you asked me about being displaced mm-hmm. i literally remember um the day i left i had born i would i'd gone and bought continental pillows from like mr price right mm-hmm. for the house mm-hmm. and i remember coming to the house picking up my stuff and putting it inside that plastic bag of the continent you know that yes, big this is from yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. red one yeah. and i put my bag mm. and i literally said um diabuya i think because in the continental period i'm mm. taking this rug back 
and I knew that oh, I was. Oh, Yes. Mm, mm. And I at that it is at that moment I'd booked myself into a hotel room and I left as if You are coming back. And you are missing continental pillars and I took my stuff to the hotel. I still came back and I said, Hey, by the way, I'm gonna go to the studio mm. later and I was like, Okay and I never came went back. back. That's how I left. What did it take? Apart from therapy, surely when we track back to that moment when you're arriving at seeking counsel. Because when you arrive at actioning the thought now, it's becoming an action, but I need to talk to a professional. I need to go and consult. There's a number of things you had been through. Yeah. You know, that lead you to making that decision. But before I decide on my own, let me just go and double check if mentally I can connect the dots. Absolutely. For me, the final day was like, I still remember 20 December 2021, mm -hmm. I had a sold out show at Joburg Theatre, Le mm -hmm. FM, and I was driving home with my then husband and some missing police. And the police were just doing their routine check, asking for a, a driver's license. Mm -hmm. And it went from being that to a full blown out argument where he's shouting at the police, he's screaming at the police. And, almost midnight I had to get out of the car and physically restrain this man sure. from okay. police that's when I knew that this is not my life and it's mm -hmm. never going to be my life and it doesn't matter what it takes it doesn't matter the fact that I thought because when we f when we were dating mm -hmm. and when we first got married I only really started to see the signs of what was going on later on about oh okay I'm in too deep mm -hmm. and that day that 20th of December 2021 that was the day where and I was like, I'm leaving. I'm not staying. For this. Who took it to social media? So he, I left in Jan, mm -hmm. and after I left, um, he was harassing me privately, harassing mm -hmm. me, harassing my family, harassing everyone else around me. Mm -hmm. um, I had to leave, I had to even leave the country. I had to go back home to Zim to, to Zim, my grandmother to Zim, yes. for six months. Mm -hmm. um, my parents were scared because my parents are far as well they were and he knew exactly what he was doing because he knows that i'm alone in Joburg. Mm. so when i went home the the plan my parent my father was like actually don't come back for my dad at some point was like forget even your music do something else mm. go into farming whatever mm. um, so he was supportive your father was supportive my father was supportive of me living an abusive marriage that's very interesting is he a tr is he is he because i know that you are um, debele yeah and is your father very traditional in the sense about umdanam se chatile asas umdanam or he's yeah. he's liberal in his understanding of impilo can compromise umdanam Utatam said one thing to me when I told, and I, I told only what was going on later. Because mm. at first I was confused, I didn't understand, I was in shock myself. Mm. Um, and the first time that I really detailed to my father what was going on, I said, Baba, in, in Debele, rage, utwa lulaga. Lulaga, yes. Lulaga, mm. umsindo. So I was mm. like, what Utatam, what's going on? That I'm, that I'm born like, ulaga. That I've never experienced, like this kind of rage, I've oh. never experienced, I've mm. never seen it before in my life. Mm. My father said, "My child, you're the most peaceful person I know. If someone mm. cannot live with you, then and they don't deserve you." Sure. Do you know what triggered this rage? Was it just out of nowhere, or do, do you have any suspicions of what triggered the rage? Possibly. <sighs> it's so hard for me to pinpoint mm. I think now that I look back I think that the people that had been in his life longer knew it mm. but the only the people around I see it now with his ex-business partners when we were still married there was a time I looked around and I was like no one wants to be around this person am I the problem what's going on mm. here and mm. I think the challenge for me is um I really was naive when I got into the relationship and what also is the thing is when you're an artist you're either in the studio or you're running around the country doing gigs mm. yeah. so the time I look back now and I'm like I didn't get to know this person properly I thought at some point it looked like we share the same type of values oh. but I didn't know that the, there's this rage and anger that's masked and now it's really turned into a raging lion it's turned mm. into something I don't even know Mm. So if you can relate to whatever it is that we might be discussing right now with uh, Barita, um, 
abusive relationships, when you actually awake, when you awaken to, to realizing that truly I am in an abusive relationship, if you can relate, because I mean, you know, sometimes you wonder why must my life be a public spectacle? But I truly mm. believe that we're all selected to be vessels some way or the other. And it is in your public shame that somebody else is saved. If you think about things, how else would other people and where else would other people draw inspiration from to overcome their own challenges, to overcome their own milestones that are this dark in their lives? If some of us are not put on public platforms for our lives to be made a spectacle of, and I know it's it's hard, I can only imagine, I wouldn't be able to say I know exactly what it is that you yeah. processed, yeah. but I can only empathize and imagine that you must have felt like where do you even start to identify as Berita, as Ukukuleto again? Yeah. Post all of this, particularly the social media abuse. I think for me, there was Berita before this, and there will be Berita. I've been in the music industry for 10 years. Mm. I, in each and every album that I've done, I've made hit music, I've collaborated, I've traveled all around Africa performing. Mm. Um, I just- You're successful, Berita. Yes, I've, mm. I've always been, and in my family, I'm a firstborn, I've always been a sister, I've always been a friend, and I've always been a lover, and he's not gonna take that away from me. Do you think your softness and your vulnerability has possibly landed you in spaces or places or circumstances where a lot of romantic heartache comes your way? Have you experienced heartache before, romantic heartache prior to the disappointment you experienced in your marriage? Or was this the first? It wasn't the first. I think um, the relationship before actually left quite a bit of trauma. Mm. Um, and I took time to work on it. Mm. But I really do wish I'd gone to therapy in between, you know, uh, relation. now that I know, I feel like now there's so much more information online and on social media, you get to understand, you know, what boundaries are. Mm, um, mm. There are things I remember, I, 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 a week into dating this man, I remember we were driving in a car and at the time he was working with a, a female artist and the female artist had an assistant and the assistant was supposed to post something on social media, you know, like routine mm. work. Mm. And I think he had bought a dongle for for this assistant. Yes, yes, of and course, Wi-Fi access on travels and access. so forth. Yeah. And the assistant forgot to post or forgot the dongle. The way he screamed and shouted at that assistant mm. until the assistant was weeping, I think for me that... I always look back on that day because it took for a, it took a long time but I call it unshao damna or ukuntuka no tetaka gubingam for the longest time he was doing it to people around me mm. and I didn't realize that when someone does things to people around you it's closing in it's actually coming to you they're isolating mm. you eventually mm. they're isolating you. Isolate, they're putting you in a situation whereby you're going to depend on him I mean the things he's gone and said. And he's really tried to, to make it seem as if he made me, which he never did and he never will. And I think he's actually, you know, looking at the system yes, in South Africa, the, he's not even supposed to be walking the streets. Oh. He's abusive to authority, has abused Real authority. Mm. He's, he's, done, he's urged so much that if it were a different country, he would be locked up. That is Berita, ladies and gentlemen, sharing with us her story. Thank you for allowing us to unlock, you know, this, the personal side of the fence of your narrative. Your yeah. voice has been very unheard for a while during all yeah. this drama. And we thank you for trusting us with your narrative. Ladies and gents, if you do relate to um, Berita's story and you may have experienced something similar or draw inspiration from it or are in a similar situation where you're questioning your relationship, you're questioning your partner and you're truly wondering, do I really know who I'm married to? Do I really know who I'm dating? What the heck is going on? Why am I feeling all sorts of negative? Um, talk to us, talk to us, 0636880959. Let's hear your voice notes. You can also give us a call on 086-00-00959. It's our show, like yourself included, right? So you know the drill, you know the drill. 22 minutes after seven. This is the live version, Miriam Makeba rendition. My gosh, my gosh. It reminds me of two human beings that are really obsessed with this version of Mashkenada. Actually, I was introduced to it by them. That is Miriam Makeba live, a late great, 742. Uh, just as we hit to sing it back on standby would be Rifilwe. But now, Berita. Yes. Take me back to when you were in the Zim. 
Mm -hmm. Before all the South African waves of emotion. Yeah. And before all the South African colors in your life. Yeah. You were Kukuletu, Ndebele, Zim with mom and dad and the rest of your family. How was life then? So, we are farmers, I guess. I grew up, I spent a lot of time with my grandmother mm -hmm. um, because I'm the first born. Yeah. Um, and I, I just had a humble childhood. Mm. I used to spend a lot of time listening to the radio. That's what I remember the most about my childhood. Yeah. Uh, listening to Oliver Mtukudzi, Andy Brown, Brenda Farsi, mm. Mafi Gizolo. Mm. That's, that's the music that I grew up listening to. Yeah. 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 And when did you decide, I'm going to try this Joburg thing out? So, <laughs> the Joburg <laughs> thing, you know, when I was 16, um, my parents moved to New Zealand. They are farmers there as okay. well. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Very so they moved, uh, you know, a lot of Zimbabwean families moved overseas in search of greener pastures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we moved there. And when we first moved there, um, that's when I really started going into music, writing. I used to design mm -hmm. as well. And in when Basha? In Basha, yes, mm. fashion design. And when I finished high school, um, I couldn't stay in the country at the time because of like permits and things like that. Of course. Um, and I looked for a place to study. I looked in Zim, I looked in SA, but I always knew that when I come to South Africa, because I'm from the southern part of Zimbabwe, mm. this, there is something that happens when I go to KZN that even Kandingena, there's as dimplene, but no, but when I, when I get into Shaga, airport security card wongo mundo we and bag there's a it's, it's like the ancestors just Quite, yeah it's, there's it's something that thing. happens yeah. so i always something always told me that you know south africa is your home and i got here mm. within my first year while i was still a student my first album came out and it wow. did you know tandoloitu came out and yes yes shattered all glass doors yes, and things yes, like that yes. so by the time i moved to Joburg, i i already had my calling intact and i i i had an idea of who i was mm. and the name berita is that given by your parents how did that come about so Berita yeah, is my mother's name. Oh, oh wow! So now you wow. and Debele, can yeah. you speak Isindebele? Yeah, yeah, Kulum. Isindebele, Nesizulu. Similar. It's very similar. Yeah. And Shona, you understand a little bit. Shona and Dinotaura, Kadoku Duk. Ah, just a little bit. Okay. Yeah. And Sibuwa is close. It's close as Pumas Colon in the Eastern Cape. Oh, and funde, also, funde kapa, mm. funde, um, Emont, Emont, yeah. yes, Walter mm. Zulu University. So mm. it's closer comes from from um, being socialized, Emont. Being socialized, but it's closer. And it's Debele, it's also very similar. Is it? Yeah. So Nguni, the Nguni dialect. The Nguni dialect. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other languages you know how to speak? I've sang in Swahili. Ah, have you sang in Swahili? But can you speak Swahili? <laughs> Just to say jambo. I, I can greet in a couple of African countries. What song in Swahili? Um, it's a song called Milele. Can we kill the music so she can close this link for us? <laughs> in song. Okay. Just so we can hear the Swahili magic. Yeah. Okay. Sema basi nasigia. Pense wanku shita nani. Onana. Onana. Mungu wanachiwa. Unani pafura, mungu anachua, muyo wangu ni yako, mpaka milele, mpaka milele, onana mpaka milele, mpaka milele, ona, ona, ona. Whoa, what does that mean? <laughs> Well, it's a song originally written by Trezor. Yeah. It oh, means Trezor's forever. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It means forever. It's a it's a love song. It's a wedding song. Oh, it beautiful. Talks about, yeah. A forever kind of love. Do you hope for a forever kind of love? Of course. <laughs> I, they can trampoline oh, our hearts oh, and drag them. We shall bounce back and love again. <laughs> <laughs> 746 959 Breakfast Decoding Verita. You've, you say you've been in studio. Yeah. 
been and in the studio. Yeah, you've been in studio, you've been working. And there's a genre of music that you're actually quite excited about. I'm very excited. So I went into the studio now and I just want to express myself. So I've been in the Amapiano studios with a couple of different DJs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I spent some time in Germany working with Afrobeats producers uh-huh, in Europe. Uh-huh. I, you know, I've been in studio just alone with my guitar. Uh-huh. So there's just different genres of music that for now I've decided I'm taking away all the boundaries and the genres. I'm just going to release music. Do you feel that that has been inspired by this need to just... There's something that pain does to you when you accept that it has happened. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel changed by your pain? Do you feel it, it's a good change that the pain has contributed? It definitely has been a spiritual journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've, t- I've chosen to look more into myself than to anyone else. Mm. So even people around me, I don't allow them to show me what's happening on social media. Good, mm-hmm. good, I don't good. allow anyone to let this conversation go any longer than it mm-hmm. needs to. I'm more focused on myself. I'm learning to I'm learning to love myself. I'm learning I'm also finding out parts about myself that I'd never looked into. Oh. Things like my childhood, how I grew oh. up. Oh. Um, you know, when I was a teenager, the relationships I had before. I literally had one day of journaling where I wrote down every person in Dagenda Jola Nai. What were the things they did wrong? After that, I was like, what are the things that I I did wrong? What Mm. are the things? There are certain things that when I look back, there's so many unhealthy ways of relating and relationships. Yes, yes. And I think it's time now that we learn to relate better. Even with some of my new music, I'm not just writing heartbreak only. Good. I'm trying to reimagine what it what it feels like because there's songs that that's love bombing. It actually is. It actually love is. Bombing. It's love bombing. It yeah. really is. There's a song that you have with Yo Maps. Yeah. Uh, it's called love Fatima. The song. Yes. Right? Yeah. What's that about? So it's a song. Yo Maps is a big Zambian artist. Yes, yes, yes. And he just released a song. It's been out for about a week and it's almost on a million views already. Wow. It's wow. blowing up in Zambia. Is this the Afrobeat sort of vibe? Yeah. Let's, let's yeah. listen. Let's so let the listen. music do the talking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fatima. Fatima. It is Yo Maps, huge Zambian superstar, and Berita, our very own. We share you with Zim. Mm, our very own, our very own. It's called Fatima. This was your preview. Dope, dope, dope. It's a beautiful song. Beautiful. Yeah. I love the production. I love the genre. And also, you've got this like soft, gentle delivery of song. Yeah. It's just like it's yeah, distinct. That's who I am. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> how did you choose you, who to collaborate with? Like, what's your process? So at the moment, I'm I'm really just spending a lot of time in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people, of course, that I was meant to work with, and. I'm reaching back out to them because mm-hmm. at some point when the blacklist still work, guys, mm. um, I was not seven and a bunch because oh, people really? reaching out to me say we want to work but we don't want to, we can't touch you because, because anything of the drama. that we touch with oh. you, someone else is speaking over it. Mm. So it feels good to have my freedom, yeah. it feels good to, I'm an independent artist, always been. It mm-hmm. feels good to be back running my business, putting on shows. I'm How long doing, did you have to freeze it for? 
Uh, six months was the time that I took completely off, was not taking bookings. Mm. When I came back, I was only taking select bookings mm -hmm. and spending most of my time in studio. In studio and just healing. Good. And just, I, Good. I, you know, shout out to my team, Spe and Bongi, that have mm. really helped me during this time to focus on what really matters, and that's the music. And also for me, it's like, it's not a publicity stunt. I don't need to wanna, okay, man, releasing, man, I'm changing the lila. Mm. just because of what I'm going through. When people mm. hear the new music, I just want them to listen to it with a, an open mind. I have mm. a new single that's coming on the 31st of March. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I just just have an open mind and just hear my soul out, hear my spirit out. Yeah, we've got a call for you on the line. Just take a listen. How's it? How's it? Hello, hello, welcome. Hello. 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 Great, thank you. You're going to have to guess who this is. <laughs> it's your biggest fan <laughs> that quickly. Ah, you're too good. That quickly. So that quickly. Good. She's in New Zealand. Yes, how is oh. your sister? Officer, how did you pull this off? <laughs> like nine five. <laughs> what? <laughs> Guys. That's what we do. That's how we roll, yo. Oh, snap. <laughs> this Amazing. is my baby sister. The love of my life. <laughs> <sighs> And your biggest fan. Like, uh, I would literally be at her show singing backstage word for word. Yeah, she <laughs> does that. She road manages me sometimes when she's around. Yeah. I'm like 0.1% top listeners on her Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nana. Thank Beautiful. you. I love you so much. Uh, I love you, so Cuckoo. And I'm so excited for the new music that's coming. Thank you, Nana. Thank and you. the rest of us are also very excited. Tandega, thank you so much for taking ah! our call. We appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye. You're welcome. Yes. Cheers, wow. honey. I watched yeah. your guys' show, and I was like, I wonder who is going to be my surprise caller. I'm like, as of Manabani, because I want to be like, Abako, Abako. South Africa. Yay! I see busy, son. I can't get time, ba. I can't, 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 can't. Yes, I'm busy, Wow. <laughs> wow. And for her to keep it a secret, wow. Thank you yeah. so much, guys. Wow. You are love. Do you feel that? Do you believe it? I do believe it. I do feel it. I get told everywhere. Yeah. I get messages about it. Yeah. And most importantly, like I feel it from God. I feel yeah. it from the source, the ultimate yeah. source of love. 100. percent Beautiful stuff. 22 minutes after eight. Decoding Barita, the first exclusive decoded uh, I did say her story is one worth um, listening to uh, so we do thank you again for trusting us with your story we're gonna go to traffic now her name is Barita ladies and gents she allowed us to decode her and get to know her a little bit better and trusted us with her story a story worth listening to abuse comes in many forms and um, just because you're a public figure doesn't mean you're immune to it mm. but you do what you do and you hold your head up high you breathe and you put one foot in front of the other and you just take it a step at a time and you find your feet all over again. You find yourself all over again. Yep. So you've created a platform for a voice of expression as a woman in the music industry. It started off as Womb, yes. as you've um, very carefully explained to me. You're a chairperson of um, the, I Am Her Experience. I Am Her Experience. Um, it's a group of ladies. It's me, it's Amanda Black, Miss Prue, Tiwe. Mosa and it's soulful women men soulful mm. women women that Wholesome care women, about yes. each other sisters yes. Yes. that want to see women progress in the industry we've mm -hmm. we've stood with each other for the past year um we've run our first event but the goal is to run recurring women led and women run music events mm -hmm. we also have the NGO side where we want to mentor women we want to the goal is really equity for women in the business mm -hmm. um i own 80 percent of my masters mm -hmm. and i'm an independent artist and my journey and the struggles that i've been through have influenced um the decision to be a part of a collective of women that want to see progress in the music industry mm -hmm. i love that story I absolutely absolutely love that narrative 853 uh, decoding barita you have an event coming up yes you're excited about I it i'm back 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 tell us all about it the yes. energy is like <laughs> here. let's go let's go so let's i'm go. putting on my first show it's happening this sunday the 26th of february at digeni mm -hmm. in Santon, johannesburg yeah it's a, a sunset session it's mm -hmm. just me and my guitar oh wow yes i just want to take when it. it's happening um starts at 4 p.m uh-huh four till what my six seven this saturday this, you saturday, said. Uh, this sunday the sunday the 26th oh, sunsets on a sunday yes 
Oh my God, my 26 has just become so busy. <sighs> So, so busy because I'm definitely coming. Mm. I'm definitely coming. Like, I just want to share my story, share my soul. The way I play guitar and the way I sing has really changed in the last year. Is I've it? really spent most of my time on my instrument. And I just yeah. want to share that um, the shows that I've been doing have just been doing incredible. So now I'm back to putting on my own shows. Good. I've got East London coming up as well on the 6th of April. I'm rolling out other dates. But first, 26th February at Digani here in Johannesburg. Back. Tickets are available at Cricket going for 250 Rand. Beautiful, beautiful. Perita, it was great decoding you around Thank the you. Oh, yeah, Perita, yeah, we yeah. love you. Nice time. So much. You're absolutely fantastic, my lady. Thank you so much. And what I love about your story is that you don't tell your story from a place of self victimization, you tell your story from a victorious place. Yeah. And I love that we are changing the face and the narrative mm. of people that have been abused they are not victims they are victors mm. and they're quite victorious because they decided to use discernment to pull themselves out of toxic relationships so well done and we're Thank looking you. forward to the new revised energy that you have I can't Sunday wait. I see you I see you I see you I can't <laughs> wait let's all go support Barita quick it that's where you get your tickets 250 a pop and we're definitely going let's go do a date there absolutely everyone it's a double multiple ibizo na mandana by 10 octok the couplets yeah it's a it's a the couplets date it's running says running says my couple is 10 yeah all right live light laugh long love the ones you would serve those that you love <laughs> And don't forget, at your best, try your best to be your decoupled best. <laughs>